Thank you. It's a great pleasure uh, being here. I would like to speak in Hebrew about Shashati Kimata Gol. First of all, I will get some help. Living, working, 
the shelter and moving together. And at the same time, the shell of the turtle looks like an urban tessiture. So we can imagine if we we'll cut the cask, the shell, if we we'll cut the shell of the turtle, living here, working there, having leisure there, the turtle will die. That's exactly what we're doing with our cities. Separating urban functions, separating people by income, separating by age, separating by religion. So the more and living and having ghettos of very rich people, ghettos of very poor people. So this is not uh, the way to have a human city. The more you mix urban functions, the more you mix incomes, the more you mix ages, the more human the city became. But this, sometimes we're giving too much importance to, to the car. Uh, the car is a, a kind of guy who is invited for a party and he doesn't want to leave. And he drinks a lot. <laughs> and he coughs a lot. At the same time, it's very egotist because he only transports one or two or three people. And it's a very demanding person. Because every time more viaducts, more freeways, more and more and more, there is no end for this. Uh, I'm going to repeat the saying that every time when I try to uh, discuss the role of the car in the city. I'm trying to say the car is like our mother-in-law. <laughs> we have to have good relationship with her, but we cannot leave she'll conduct our lives. <coughs> in other words, if the only woman in your life is your mother-in-law, you have a big problem. <laughs> So this is the accordion, the friendly bus, who care to transport 300 people. Well, but what for me is very important that every city has a design. If it's radial, if it's linear, every city has a design. This is the design from my city, Curitiba. The design of Rio, it's like two birds kissing themselves. Oaxaca, Me 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 Mexico, San Francisco, it's uh, Market Street, Van Ness, and the waterfront. So, what is the design of the city? It's a strange archaeology where we're trying to catch the old roads, old ways, and the places that they are important for us, and linking them through a structure of living, working, and moving together. And this is the structure of growth of my city. A city that doesn't have a design, a very clear design, doesn't have a priority. And so it's like a um, growth, uh, not controlled growth. And this design, I, it's a structure of living, working together, uh, it's, we're working 
for almost 40, 45 years, since 71, 50, 40 years. Uh, it's where we have more density, we have a better offer of public transport. And very simple, buses running in dedicated lanes. And very fast. And this system provides a very high quality, that means speed, uh, you're, you're boarding very fast, and at the same time the frequency. You don't wait more than one minute for a bus. Sometimes 30 seconds. Is it possible? A few years ago, uh, the reporter of the, the journalist of the New York Times came for an interview and in my house, my wife, she was there uh, and we were discussing about what is the system of transport of Curitiba. I told him the system is buses running in dedicated lanes, uh, fast, very fast boarding, and you don't have to wait more than one minute for a bus. My wife, at that time, she was alive, and in opposition as always, <laughs> she thought, no, this is not possible. I was ashamed <laughs> being called a liar in front of the uh, reporter, the, the journalist of the New York Times. So I took them to the, the race which we could see, same view that we're seeing here, we could see the system and we tried to figure out how much time every bus will come. It was 40 seconds. So my morale, 40 seconds, every 40 seconds a bus. So my morale in my house was great <laughs> during three months <laughs> after I realized that we shouldn't speak to women before 9.52 in the morning. <laughs> Let's give some time. They should land before. It's a landing process. So, but the idea that we don't have to wait 20 years for this false dilemma, which is the car or a subway. There's so, so, there's so many alternatives that you don't need to have this dilemma because the car is not the solution and waiting for a complete network of subways is impossible. So, every city we have common problems, uh, education, health care, uh, care of children, safety, <coughs> any, but three issues are becoming very, very important. Not for your city, but for the whole mankind. First is mobility. Second, the sustainability, which is linked to mobility, of course. And the third is social diversity, which is tolerance, coexistence, diversity. So, speaking about mobility, I would like to just, I won't take too much time on explaining, but this is the evolution of the system and we started with 25,000 passengers a day. Now we are transporting 2,300,000 passengers. 2,300,000 passengers a day. No subsidy. 
the system pays by itself. Okay, the subway in London, which is the oldest in the world, is transporting now 2,900,000 passengers. And it's a city, oh, 12, 15 times bigger than our city, <laughs> or 10 times bigger. So, the idea, even if I, I, my feeling is the future is linked to, the future is on surface, I don't try to prove which system is the best. What, what makes the big difference is giving to the bus the same performance as that way. It's like metronizing the bus. With quick boarding, you're paying before entering in the bus and you're boarding at the same level. And here is what he looks. It's boarding tubes and you're boarding very fast. It's like a subway. But you don't have to wait 20 and the cost is hundred times less expensive by kilometer. Fifty to hundred times less expensive. And there's a few subways that they can provide good transport for handicapped. And you can use, there's a small elevator and you can use as a normal, like a normal passenger. But we started the idea of integrate uh, 1983 in Rio, I worked as the commissioner of the year 2000, and we proposed integration, the bus and the subway. At that time, the subway company they were against, the private companies that they are running the buses they were against. 25 years after, the subway company and the private companies, they contracted us to develop an idea about mobility for the Olympic Games. And this, I'm going to show a little bit after what is the idea. But, not trying to prove which system is the best. Anyway, if you have a subway, it has to be a smart subway. Uh, I've been in London many times discussing uh, how it could be more smart, less stops, or because uh, most of the, the large majority of the systems, uh, they are not smart. So we have to have a smart bus, a smart taxi, individual transport without private ownership, like the Vélib in France. It, it's public. And, or a car without private ownership. This is the Vélib, very successful in France. And that's the idea we're developing, is a smaller car in the world. The dog dog, which is docking car. It's electric, and your dock, the car, is so it's integrated to the public transport. But it's four, it's one fourth of the size of the smart car. The half on the width and the half on the length, and I can fit inside. Uh -huh. So, we're developing this car, it's the fifth prototype, uh, it's for one person, we, we, we made for two, but that's to keep the idea that it's not, it's a different car, it's not enough changing a car for an electric. Because you have to understand, you have to have clean energy. But 
On the other hand, it's not enough because you have to avoid bottlenecks. You have uh, the traffic. So it's the way you use the car. That's why it's a talking car. Uh, probably you have your car, your normal car, electric, but for for leisure, long distances, but for routine itinerary, you have to have a good public transport with some help of uh, less mile, less smart, less mile or mm, the first mile and this is a prototype for two but this is the last one which is in the Vienna the design in Saint-Étienne Saint in, in France it's just two parts and both recyclable that's, that's the car well, Next month, this car is going to, we're going to show this car in Berlin and after in Paris. And I want to drive this car, of course, with some taking care in, in those cities. Uh, the idea is not, I'm not a car designer. It's the concept how to use the car. For instance. The idea that one car you can put six, that's why it has to be small. And that's the idea about the public uh, the system of mobility for the Olympic Games. That's the idea. I'm not sure if they are going to, to implement that. But this is how you integrate the bus and the subway. And this is how it's going to be in the landscape in Rio. It's glass with LED. Slightly during the day it's not being colored because this is not Shanghai. But it has at night it's going to be slightly colored. The other issue is how <coughs> Can we have a big city without periphery? Uh, Sao Paulo is a city that has, they are building the fourth line, but 84% of people are using surface. 84%. So it's impossible. So we're waiting more 20 years for one more line. That this is not a solution. <laughs> or increasing the lines, the, the lanes in, on, uh, for the cars. This also is not a solution, of course. But, on the other hand, the, the, what is being improved is the railroad suburb lines. It's, it's being improved and improved so it's a good super light, a uh, super uh, railroad system. <coughs> the idea, you know the High Line in New York, it's a small strip uh, which was a uh, uh, subway line. The idea is building a big promenade above and linking the whole city through this promenade where you can walk, bike, or electric cars. And the new buildings will pay the part of the promenade. But you can link any kind of income in this. So this the idea is not having a periphery, everyone takes part of the city. This is uh, it's just it's not the architecture is it's just to show it's not uh, of course it's not a uh,
skill, the architect. The, the way how we understand it could be done. Uh, another issue that means that every time when you work with transport, it has to be linked to living and working. A commuting system is not the solution. Because you have to renovate the number of passengers all the time. Living and working and everything together. So, uh, you see, we have in 1971, we have a half square meter of green air building habitat. Now we have 52 square meter per habitat. And uh, the population tripled. So how I'm not uh, just how we transform every area uh, the possibility to increasing the the green areas, new parks, and using quarries, old quarries. With where this is the Open University for Environment where we teach the opinion makers, people, uh, the taxi drivers, bus drivers, janitors, industrial managers. They, we teach about how could be uh, the, con the environmental concern in the city. And this is the Botanic Garden, how long it takes to build a Botanic Garden? 100 years. This Botanic Garden was built in three months. But we are still planting the trees and we will plant the trees for 100 years. Or this was a quarry, old quarry too, and this quarry was transformed in a theater in two months, legally, that means we made the bid for the material, which is the metal, the tubes, and another bid for the manpower. In two months, it was uh, finished. It's a beautiful uh, theater. This was a landfill, garbage. Now it's a beautiful park. But why? Because we started with the children. We teach every child in every school, every child in every school to separate their garbage. And after six months, the children, they teach their parents. And after, we started with the campaign. But since then, since 1989, is the highest rate of separation of garbage in the world. 60, 70% of people, they are separating their garbage in their homes. But we started, how we started? Because I was, I, I told a few hours ago, I was surprised how in this country, with a very high standard of knowledge, of technology, the garbage, the problem of garbage is terrible here. So it's really terrible. I cannot understand. It's a problem which is not difficult to solve. But there is no care of the problem of garbage. And shame on you. <laughs> uh, because, listen, we had in our slums a big problem. People used to chew away the garbage and the children, they played in the polluted streams. But it's, it was terrible. And we started the program how we're going to buy the garbage.
we had to pay anyway to the collect the garbage. So we paid the bread. Everyone has to bring their bag to the closest place where the trucks they were. And in three months, the stumps or they were clean. So we started little by little to understand how important it is to work. And to understand, you cannot uh, mix organic and recycled because you're going to uh, uh, contaminate <laughs> the rest, the recycling group, recycle. You're going to spend energy to, to contaminate and after to separate. This is not clever. The Lord has come. So, I think little by little we started to work this way. I remember my first day I worked as a, a garbage, how do you call it, a garbage, a garbage man, a, a garbage collector. And the kids, they were running I, just to show how to took the recycle and put in the green truck. And the kids, they were running after me, garbage cleaner, garbage. So, lichero, lichero. And if I told them the garbage cleaner is the hero of the environment. So, if they work well, if you're going to be your garbage uh, manager, you're going to work well. Uh, but it's not only the garbage. Uh, we we learned through the children. We understood well that if you want to give the idea about sustainability, it has to be through the children. So, because there is a few issues that is very important. One, use less your car. Second, separate your garbage. Third, live closer to home. I live closer to work, I'm sorry. Live closer to work. And save more and waste less. This is the equation of sustainability. And little by little we realize that the whole discussion in the world is new materials. Uh, of course, and from now on, we have to work with this. And the man who has the best knowledge of this is right here, Michael Braungart. He's the guy who knows everything about new sustainable materials besides other issues. <laughs> uh, new sources of energy, of course, very important. Uh, green buildings, of course, are recycling, reusing. Everything is important. But we have to understand that 75% of carbon emissions are related to the cities. So, on the concept of the cities, we can be also um, more effective. We have to work with everything. But how could we work better in the concept of the cities? Very easily. Use less your car, at least in your routine itinerary. Separate your garbage. If closer to work, save more, waste less. And that's, I think, we, I'm obsessed about the idea how to teach the, ch the city for the children. How to make this, the children understand better their cities. So, and we, I, with the help of a great movie director, we made a movie of seven minutes. It's called A Convenient Start. 
This movie is on the YouTube. And two years ago, we won uh, a festival of films about sustainability in New York. Not such a big deal. There was no many competitors. <laughs> but anyway, we won a festival of films. So, this idea I gave to Eram uh, and uh, to, to put uh, in Hebrew, but it's in English in uh, it's the YouTube. But it's, it's better if in every school we could have this. Or other movies, or other ideas. What's important is, and that's why I was very happy to meet the people from the Institute of a democratic education because it's the it's how the idea how to link education with the city with with the environment and it's the only way. I remember the time when they used to build university outside the city. What kind of citizen we can we can offer to the society when this guy doesn't know nothing about the city where he lives. So, now, fortunately, can you imagine the Sorbonne outside Paris? Can you imagine Heidelberg, the university outside the city? Or the Columbia University outside the city? Uh, that's why thematic areas in the city is not healthy. Mix. Why we like better <coughs> European cities or uh, Middle East cities? Because there is mix. It's not big separated areas. Okay. Uh, the other issue is identity. I, I like to compare the city as our family portrait. We never rip our family. You never rip your family portrait. Even if you don't like the nose of your uncle. Because this portrait is you. And there's many, many places that they are not land, national landmarks, but they are important for the portrait of the city, of this family portrait. So, for example, Curitiba, downtown areas, it's most German, because we have large number of uh, descendants of German, of foreign, Polish, of Ukrainians, of Italians, of Jews, Arabs, from everywhere. And so, uh, that, that's the city, the pedestrian mall works, which was transformed in a pedestrian area in 72 hours. Hours, not days, and not months. Not one. Uh, this is the building that tries to show, to tell the history of the city. Uh, this, but during the 300th anniversary of the city, we wanted to pay homage to our ethnic contribution. So that's the portal of the Italians. And the Ukrainian park. The Polish park. <laughs> the Japanese square. The German park. And all of a sudden, the Soviet Union, they split. <laughs> and since we have people 
from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, we had to stop the program. <laughs> we didn't have the money. <laughs> but what I'm doing now, I'm doing urban acupuncture. Uh, what is sometimes the process of planning takes time and it has to take time but, but sometimes during you can through some focal ideas two or three or four ideas you can provoke a new energy that would help the process of planning not instead of the process of planning that's what I call urban acupuncture. One of the best examples, of course, is the Louvre. One jest, one is solved problems of centuries. But it has not to be a big, big building. The smallest part in New York is the more beautiful. The Petty Park, 53rd Street East. 13 meters per 32. Or this is the Museum of Niemeyer, Niemeyer Museum in Curitiba. Niemeyer, by the way, he's, he's, he's working, he's 103 years old and still working. And at 99, he married a woman with 65. <laughs> and he's so genius that my feeling is he, he married her for sex. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked him, why are you working so much? He answered me, because someone in the family has to work. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one project, one acupuncture that my we did is the museum of the Bossa Nova because Bossa Nova in Rio is the soundtrack of Rio and we wanted uh, to tell the story of the Bossa Nova and it's like a keyboard floating like the music in Portuguese como doce balanço do mar uh, this is how it's going to be. It's on the, the process of starting this project. This is the idea we developed for Fiti Paul, the big car racer. He wanted the, the speed museum. I convinced him to build a mobility museum. The idea is the frozen speed would like this way. And this museum will tell all the story of mobility. Or this Brasilia, we worked for the, we made a project for the 50th anniversary of Brasilia. The plane, the right side, is where we have 500,000 people living there and 2,500,000 working there. And the problem is the people that they are living on the periphery on the satellite cities. So we have a very formal city and we proposed and we have a chaotic growth outside the city. So we proposed a new form for the satellite cities, which is along the parks. It's an analogy of the two metaphors, the plain and the lake, and the new area with the parks. And linking with a boulevard, linking the two parts of the city. Again, sustainability is saving more wasting less. You know, we have to work with less money. Too much money interfere. Avoid, forget you're rich. 
because I realized many, in many cities they built, for instance, Valencia. They're, they're building for shade, the Ombractum. Uh, Calatrava is a genius, genius. But it's very expensive building just to make a shade. So we proposed in a park in Brasilia a shade, Ombractum, with bouquets of bamboos, which is, thank you, which is which is very simple and very low expensive. Or this old reservoir in the city called Cuyaba, which is now a museum. Oaxaca, Mexico, they wanted to build a huge exhibition space uh, and for 10,000 people, I told them why, with a so wa wonderful climate, you're going to build for 10,000 people to using this once, once or twice a year. So why not small auditoriums? And when you you need for 10,000, you can use the patio. Or we're working now in Luanda, Angola. It's the design of the walkways. It's becoming a very, for the people from Luanda, it's becoming a very important place for leisure. Or this idea in Panama, the second city, David, we proposed uh, through the design of the steps. There's no building. It's during the processions with the candles we'll have this design. It's not urban furniture, it's human furniture. Or this old uh, uh, airport in Santiago Los Cavaleros, Repu the Dominican Republic. We proposed a park for young people. And this is the old place from the plains. But it's not, you know, a parking lot where big bands, the people from the Tunchi, 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 <laughs> Tunchi, Tunchi, we propose a, a theater with four columns in every part. You have, but it's a more beautiful place than a parking lot. So, this is the Mazatlan, it's an island in front of the historic center of Mazatlan. Uh, for years, uh, it was, they tried to build and they tried to cheat the existing uh, fishermen. And it never happened, they wanted to propose to buy this island through some despairs, how to say? Marot, Marot. Marot. Let's take the word. Yeah. So, there, an engineer, very young engineer, he proposed for the whole community, 2,000 people, 2,000 families, he proposed partnership. <coughs> and this island has Every 10 meters has a, a palm tree. So, and we can sand dunes, we have. So, our idea is not touching the terrain. Trying to put technology in zero cars. Why do we have to cross and putting bridges and parking and asphalt and so? Uh, with five minutes by uh, Evaporetto, you'll be in this island, the university, and it's for 200,000 people. And the idea is building in between the palm trees. And the lightning is going to be the trees. And they wanted to build again a big hotel, big uh, 
exhibition places. But we realized that there is a hill, they cut it to, mm, to build a pier a long time ago, about 40 years ago. So we propose as the hotel to remake the silhouette mm. of the hill and we'll have the hotel in this place. Sao Paulo, again, the idea of providing life to decaying places. There, every city has some decaying places. And the people, they, it's hectic during the day, but at night it's empty. They're drug dealers. It's terrible. This place is really terrible. And there, nobody wants to live there because there is no street life. So the idea is bringing, building um, portable streets. So like the Bukinists in Paris, bringing some uh, streets, some models uh, on a Friday night and removing it on a, sun, on a Monday morning. And during the week, we'll put the streets in front of a university or other places. And we developed this idea, uh, bus shelters, newsstand, working stations, hotels in airport, and the car, but always living, working, moving together. And this is, we proposed for Rio at night and removing in the morning during the day, the portable streets. And this is uh, during the festival of theater in Curitiba, there was some, uh, we tested these portable places for commerce to bring uh, street life. Uh, this is our office. Uh, and Everything is, we intend to be as, as more, more sustainable as possible. But to, to finish, in, I would like to give you an example. <coughs> the World Nature Games in 1997. And that year we didn't have Olympic Games or World Cup. And we organized in six months before we organized the World Nature Games. 60 countries, 120 TV channels, and we didn't spend one shekel <laughs> for stadiums, auditoriums, or whatever. Because the games, they were ballooning, rafting, uh, cycling, climbing the and the waterfall, and, and that's not spending money. Uh, we have 399 cities in my state. 399, it's, there are some cities they needed a uh, uh, theater. For 3,000 people, it's very difficult to build, to have, to build a theater uh, just for a city that has 3,000 inhabitants. So we organized, we recycled 10 buses. It's a cultural convoy. Every bus, one bus for music, the other bus for theater, for opera, for dance, for popular music, for everything. And during five years, they traveled around the state with an average of 1,500 people every show. So, to finish, I would like to say that one thing, every time when I'm in a city, I try to ask the mayor or the neighborhoods or the
the start of planning. What is your problem? Oh, any kind, there are many answers. Oh, sewage problem. Or it's, uh, our problem is traffic. Or safety. Any kind of problem. So, I used to make a stop and after a pause and after I tried to answer, to ask. Okay, and what's your dream? What's your dream? But which is not related to the solution of those problems. What's really your dream? I've got a wonderful answer from the governor of Perm in Russia. This is close to Siberia, Siberia. Uh, he answered me, my dream is having all the young people in my city uh, the way they wouldn't like to go to Moscow. Okay, and what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to make, to prepare this city to be a good city for young people and children. Okay, and what are you doing? My city, we're proposing as the cultural capital of Russia. And he showed me all the programs they were trying to do. It was wonderful. So, it's a dream, it's so. If I, I would like to tell you, I was born in a street, second more important street in my city. In that street, there was the train station, the trolley station, there was uh, the industries, there were bars, restaurants, newspapers, the state assembly, uh, uh, the big hotel, more important at that time, and uh, the radio stations, everything. We had everything in that street. At the end of the street, the city hall. So, in that street, I had my course of reality. Because the people, they came from the railroad, uh, the people coming from the countryside, I knew their problems, and they, they went to uh, my father's shop, and I used to listen to their problems and so on. But, on the other hand, close to my house, there was a circus. This circus stayed there for 10 years. Every night we used to go to the circus. My brother, which is here, he was not so, he was still more young. I could, he couldn't go every night. So we went every night to the circus. I know everything about circus. Uh, a circus is moved by a rumba. If you don't play a rumba, the trapezist will fall down. <laughs> and you have, or a mag magician, it has to have a music, tra 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 and the magic plates, it has a rhythm. So, in this circus I had my course of fantasy. <laughs> so, reality and fantasy. This is linked, what I call, Having a dream. Having a dream. So sometimes, sometimes you cannot fulfill your dream. I'm a very happy man because I, many of my dreams I could make it happen. I'm not speaking about professional dreams or political dreams. I married the woman that I love. I had my daughter's wedding, I had klezmer music. That was my dream. <laughs> uh, and many other dreams. So I realized 
that if you cannot fulfill your dream, you, you can be sure. Because if you dedicate yourself deeply to your dream, <coughs> one day, one time this dream will go around you, it will hit you, and will ask you, you remember me? I am your, I am your dream. <laughs> it's your second chance. Don't lose it. Thank you. talked a lot about transportation and uh, you didn't mention uh, motorcycles. Did you encourage uh, the usage of uh, motorcycles in your city? I'm sorry, I, I have a problem. Of okay, I can talk louder. Motorcycles. Motorcycles. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long mostly we have the bike lanes in the city. We have 120 kilometers of uh, bike lanes, but we still have to increase. I'm working with the idea or trying to propose Curitiba. I, I'm not the mayor, uh, but the idea is of proposing that city to be the first city that will use more lines uh, for the bicycle and the uh, bicycle and also for the dog dog. That's the idea of putting 5,000 dog dogs in that place. And also motorcycles. As long with, with no high speed, uh, the speed of our, uh, of the car we proposed is, oh, thank you. The speed, the speed of the car we propose is 25 kilometers per hour and, uh, and uh, autonomy of 50 kilometers and solar energy. But the motorcycle, motorcycle, uh, I, would, I would say some parts of the city, uh, it's, it's not forbidden, but not a special place for the motorcycle. But we should work with this. Okay. Spaces 
But now, every building you can put through, uh, you can put any kind of use in any envelope. Wireless, everything, you can, you are not, uh, you can uh, use every kind of building. You have the technology to use it. So it has not to be outside the city. And I'm not saying it's totally wrong, but I don't like uh, a university outside the city. Because there is no contact with the city. Okay. What do you think the role of us as citizens can be? The role of citizens? What was the role of citizens in Corinthian? Okay, I think, first of all, uh, it's proposing. Don't, if you're not on on the political position, you're not forbidden, you're not, you can propose. It's the way you organize your proposal. Because the whole kind of <coughs> participation, it's a really a game. Who starts first? Political decision makers, technical staffs, or the neighborhoods. It doesn't matter. But always you start with a proposal. Because why? when you want to make it happen, just, I think, what is, how can you make it happen? First of all, you have to propose a scenario, an idea, a project that everyone or the large majority they understand it is desirable. So if your organization, you want to change, make a proposal, do it. Organize yourself and do it. It's the pressure how I started to work with the city. I was a student from architecture. At that time, the mayor uh, was destroying the whole story of the city because he was widening the streets and uh, destroying the whole buildings for preparing the streets for cars. So the students, we were against that and we started the movement asking for a plan for the city. So, and there is one thing. I, I really uh, think that the real equation of participation is always starting with a proposal. Innovation is starting. You have to start, start. Uh, I remember when I was the president of the International Union of Architects, I organized the architects always, they were complain, complaining that they don't have participation in the planning of the city. Okay, we organized a competition in every city in the world that wanted to do this and to propose an idea for your own city. Every professional could propose one idea for, for one group of professional proposing one idea for its own city. And we had 500 cities, uh, a large number of proposals. It's, it starts always with an idea. If you have an idea, organize your group and propose the idea. Uh, if there is no idea, it's difficult. No? Uh, We're going to take the last one. You can, okay. I think you do the waste and the sewage of the city. Waste and sewage, okay. Uh, 
We had a problem at that time that uh, we didn't have enough space for landfills. And we realized that we could uh, transform a problem in one third of the problem, separating garbage. Okay, but more and more now, we're working in two projects, in two cities, where we're proposing uh, for sewage for by suction, suction, uh, suction. So, but uh, the idea is, if you have this, you don't have to dig and you uh, you can mix this with with the organic waste so the only thing you need is the collect of recyclable material i logically it, it it's possible to do it there are there is technology to do it Mostly when you have, when you cannot dig, uh, I would say it's not expensive, but mostly when you cannot dig, every time work by gravity is terrible, but sometimes you have to do it. But the idea of suction and linking with the organic waste, it could be a good solution. And you have only the collect of recyclable. That's one idea. I think there would be better ideas in this issue. But I, I'm always I'm convinced that we cannot touch. We have to avoid to touch too much the terrain. For instance, in the favelas in Rio. When we worked there, we proposed, can it be improved, you, we can improve, for instance, how could in a hill, many people, many people, they were dying by being, by the garbage. Uh, so, we proposed, well, let's buy the garbage. And also, not digging the land, because it's in a hill, we proposed uh, energy, supply of energy and water supply through the hand rails of the stairs. And the, and the sewage also through, through the steps. And how about, so many problems will be solved this, ah, and entering in the house the easiest way, water through the window, or, but not digging. Because it's very, it's difficult. It's, it could, you can avoid many, many, many problems. And how about uh, jobs? Uh, well, let's make a free zone. Every company that will build their business in the slum that would provide jobs for the people in the slum will not pay any tax. City tax or state tax. That was an idea. So, uh, it's, it's one possibility. But I don't want uh, to make your uh, if not, you know, uh, a few years ago I went to Cuba, uh, a long time ago, in, in 1988. At that time, the Generalissima Jefe, uh, Fidel Castro, he used to speak for 11 hours, 13 hours. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes, when I'm happy, uh, I have this Cuban spirit. <laughs>
And tonight I'm happy. <laughs> so be prepared. We have to stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.